I would like to introduce our speaker. Through my many travels around here and being in service and carrying the message of Narcotics Anonymous, right? I got an opportunity to be down in Tennessee and I met this brother. I know, you know, I, 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 I know they like to introduce each other. I know they like to come up here and share a little bit about what they, you know, get from each other because they like a family. I see them. And um, I was in Tennessee, man. And the brother shared, and he carried a clear narcotics anonymous message. And the reason why I knew it was clear because it said what's shared from the heart reaches the heart. He touched me. I've been calling him, reaching out. I love him. I love all of these brothers, man. They have given me a lot. They have begun to take my recovery in a whole, you know, it's been taken off. But we're going to let Raymond L. from Brooklyn do what he do. Right. I'm a grateful recovering addict. My name is Raymond. I want to thank God that I'm here. Um, I want to thank the programming committee, all the trusted servants. Um, I attended the workshop for a little while. I was able to, you know, uh, learn a little bit. Um, I got a short attention span, so as long as I could take, pay attention, I could learn. So I want to thank all those who are involved in service this weekend, behind the scenes, all this stuff. Um, you know, I don't, it's not taken for granted, even though sometimes it might appear that it is. Um, I'm very blessed. I had a great weekend. I thank the World Board, the, 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 the staff at World, the regional trusted servants, the area, the, everybody. Thank you for your service. Um, addicts' lives have changed as a result of you guys doing service. Um, so thank you, all right? Um, I want to say that anything I share up here is my experience, my strength, my hope, stuff I believe in. Um, and you got to, you know, take what you can and leave the rest. Eat the chicken, spit out the bones. You know what I mean? I didn't come here. I don't go anywhere to tell anyone how you should recover or how you should work the steps. So if you're not doing it like we do it in my little camp, then you're doing it wrong. And You know, no, I, I didn't come here for that. Um, I really, really, really uh, am humbled and I, I'm still in awe of God's grace and his mercy in my life. Um, I cursed God. I shook my fist at God. I used to unload my nine millimeter in the sky. I hated God. You know what I mean? I hated God. And um, so to be here and to be asked to share in any capacity, and I, like this is nice, and I don't want to devalue this or degrade this. But you know, I just shared in a in an H and I meeting where everybody was nodding out, and it appeared like they wasn't really listening. But uh, I believe that when we share our experience and the hope, uh, that it could pierce a heart even without you noticing. You know what I mean? And so, so I, 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 that's an honor, and this is an honor. You know what I mean? Like, um, so, all right. This is supposed to be the spiritual meeting. I'm supposed to be the spiritual speaker. Um, we'll see how it goes. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, when I got here, I was 17 years old. I came, I walked into the doors of narcotics and I was 17 years old, and. Um, and I did, I, you know, the, where, where I come from, they, they, in the format sometimes, they say, please, if you're new, uh, try to identify and not compare. And they explain that, which is pretty cool. They said, when you identify, you look for the similarities. And when you're comparing, you're looking for the differences. And even though I said it and I understood it, I didn't know how to do it. You, you know what I'm saying? I said, well, if you didn't get clean at 17, then you really don't know what it's like. You know what I mean? Or if you got 17 years clean, but you didn't get clean at 17, you don't got no experience. So you're telling me your theory. And so I was too busy uh, uh, comparing, looking for differences. The disease, this is the disease, the disease of separation. And um, so it took me a long time uh, to finally, you know, the fog to lift, the noise to die down a little bit. Um, I, I would shoot the messenger on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, and I relapsed. And, you know, so, so I, February 28th, 1991, um, I joined the No Matter What Club. 
right? February 28th, 1991. I went to a place. I, some people get offended. I, I hope I don't, I don't want to offend you on purpose, but I just want to share my, my share the way I share my share. And when you get your turn, you share it your way. You know what I mean? Um, but I used to go to this place called St. Mark's, right? I used to go to St. Mark's. And um, some people don't like that. Don't say that. Well, it was, it's in the meeting with St. Mark's. You know what I mean? So um, I used to go to this place called St. Mark's in Manhattan, and they had meetings from click to click, all right? From early in the morning to late in the morning, you know what I mean? And uh, I came back from a relapse, and this old man, uh, Santos, uh, he looked at me, and he said, I said, I got one day back again, you know, I was chippy, you know, one day back, one day back, one day back. And, um, and he said, um, he said, only punks go out, right? He said, I just want to, you know, he said, and I'm like, that's not N.A. stuff, uh, that's, that's not very nice, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but it messed me up, you know what I mean? It, it, it affected me in a positive way. It affected my ego. It affected my... Because all my life, I've been trying to prove to everybody that I'm not a punk. In fact, sometimes the disease says we still got to prove that you're not a punk to people who are not looking no more. You know what I mean? And so, but all my life, I ain't no punk. You think I'm a punk? You think there's something sweet over here? I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. I'm not the one. And, and so when he said that, it, it, it plucked a cord. That only punks go out. I didn't like that. You know, I'm an addict. You know, pilots, they fly planes. Bus drivers drive buses. Addicts, we smoke crack, shoot dope, alcohol to Xanax from A to Z. We use mood or mind altering substances. And he said, nah, let me tell you something. Once you hear this life transforming message of hope, that an addict, any addict, a young, a young stupid 17 year old addict who thinks he knows everything, or an 80 year old addict who thinks he knows, you know, any addict, to stop using, lose the desire to use, and find a, win, a new way of life. Once you hear that message, and you use, it's a cowardly thing, he told me. And so, so I didn't like that. And, and he was a little too old for me to lay hands on him. You know what I mean? So, so, so it messed me up. And then, and then I heard that there's a, there's a let's not check in. I, I'm sharing my experience. And I'm not saying this in the literature. I'm just saying my experience. And I told you already, ch eat the chicken, spit out the bones. You know what I mean? If it don't apply, let it fly. Old slogan. All right? Okay. So, so they said, they said, listen, man. You know, and, and he said, for all you, you know, we want you to keep coming back. And we're glad you made it. And we applaud that you made it back. And it takes courage to come back. But we want to let you know, for all you the chippy guys, just me guys, you know, one day back every week, one day back. And, listen, and if you're like that, keep coming back. Right? Because there's only, they, I, they wrote in my basic text, there's only two mistakes you can make in Narcotics Anonymous, they said. The first mistake you can make is pick up. The second mistake you can make is not come back. All right? Everything else is a learning experience. Okay, so but if you are like me and couldn't get clean and I smoked crack in the bathroom and came and got a 30 key tag right after I took a hit, right? I came geeking to get the key tag and I geeked my way back to the seat. Told him I had 30 days clean. You know what I mean? So if you like that, please keep coming back. I'm not sharing this to discourage you or to degrade you or to debase you. I'm sharing what, what, what messed me up, what provoked me to join the No Matter What Club. So Santo said only punks go out. And then this other guy said, for all you keep coming, you know, all you people, chippy brothers, who, you know, in St. Mark's, they didn't have a lot of key tags. They said, you brothers that take all the white key tags, should bring them back so we can give them to other people, you know, who come in, you know. So... So, so, so they said for you brothers, right? We want, even if you keep using, keep coming back. But there is an elite group. There are members of Narcotics and I'm an elite group, they said. Uh, elite, I was like, what that mean? Like the Navy SEALs, right? <laughs> there, there are an elite group members in NA that, listen, their, their girlfriends are leaving them, their children are smoking crack, they're losing their jobs, they're getting divorced, their parents are dying, their children are getting torn up, and no matter what happens, these elite, these elite members are not using no matter what. And I thought to myself, I want to be a Navy SEAL in NA. I thought to myself, I want, I want to be able to, to you know, that, to me, that's like wearing jewelry in jail. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what, we don't use, like, what? Yeah, I got 30 days. That's right, what? I got 60 days. Yeah, that, you know, I got the red key tag. That's right, what? And it was, you know, it was a big deal. It was a big deal to wear the key tags. 
that, you know, in New York, you wear key tags. Yo, easy does it just for today. And we know it was, it was like, yeah, I got 30 days. That's right. I'm doing this. I ain't no, and it was a big deal to not use no matter what. So if you, if you are using, please keep coming back. I'm just saying these people provoke me. And to be an elite, elite member is a violation of the 12th tradition. I know that, but it provoked me. You understand? So, so I kept coming back. February 28th, I said, I'm not going to use no matter what. And listen, I felt like using all the time. When I, got, when I came uh, out of rehab in, in December 24th, 1990, God had removed the obsession to use. When I threw the gift back in his face, I came back with the obsession hardcore in February in 91. And I felt like using and I, You know the obsession? You know, let's get high. Let's just do one. It'll be different this time. Don't smoke a bloing. Smoke a joint. You know, just to have a drink. You know, you don't got a problem. The, the obsession. You can't hear the speaker. You can't hear nobody. It, it's on you. It's, you know, sitting on your hands. You need medication. You're bugging out. You know what I mean? Just, you know what I mean? And it was hard on me. It was on me hard. And the disease was on me. And it, the, 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 the voices were loud. But I wanted to be down with the no matter what club. I heard the guy share. They raped his daughter. Right? They raped his daughter. And said, yeah, they raped my daughter. They raped my baby. And he was sharing. And I'm like, I couldn't believe that he's sharing just though he's sharing. And he said, but I'm, and he said, I'm grateful they didn't kill her. And, and he said, and, and I'm not going to, and I'm not going to use. And I was like, Dang, he's not, that's a good reason to use. You know, I said, that's a good reason, you, you know. And so, but I saw members and people, and I saw them. You know, it says that as we see uh, 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 the members, as we see miracles happening, other people's life, acceptance becomes trust. Right? And so I started seeing it. And listen, you are the hope. You always have been the hope, and you will always be the hope. When I see you doing it, it says that I can do it too. You understand? If you get your GED, that's what happened to me. A guy in my home group, he was a stupid guy, idiot guy, right? <laughs> I didn't like him for nothing. And, and, and he, he said, I'm going to get my GED. I'm going to get my GED. And I said, this is not GED anonymous. This is not, I don't care about you. So I'm on, you know, addiction. And he said, and then I got to my sponsor. Oh, this, this cat always a cornball. You know, the one with his hat matches his sneakers. That cornball, he's talking about his GED. And, you know, and, and, and my sponsor said two things. One, you're jealous because you don't got a hat that matches your sneakers. Right? And he said, Two, why don't you get some coverage and you go get your GED? You know what I mean? And so, so that guy I didn't like, he was my hope and I got my GED. And today I got a GED, I got a good enough diploma. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of my GED. So anyway, so I saw the people doing it. I saw people getting clean and staying clean. And I, and I started just following. Listen, you know, if you want to, I learned, I learned from, I had a hundred year old sponsor. He was 100 years old. He had arthritis. His fingers were bent like this. And he would say, listen, you little Mexican, you got to stop. And I'm Puerto Rican. You know what I mean? And he said, he's like this. Listen here, you little Mexican, you got to stop your crap. You know, leave macho me at the door. Leave poor me at the door. You ain't no gangster. You are a god of right. He said, he said, if you was a heron addict, I would respect you a little bit. But you're a crackhead. You know what I mean? Crack, like, you know. That's, the kind of sp that's the kind of sponsorship I got in the, in the beginning. And so, but I, but I, but I watched y'all. Listen, I hated on y'all. I was drinking haterade all the way. But I watched y'all, and y'all was doing it. And, and, and so I, I didn't use no matter what. And eventually, the, the obsession wore off, right? And I get emotional just thinking about it because it was on me hard. I mean, it was on me hard. I, I didn't, you know. And I was listen. And I and I had I had. I had a surrendered and yielded that if I was just going to stay clean with the obsession on me, then that's what I get because I, I threw the gift of God back in his face when he gave it to me the first time. So I had yielded, okay, if this is how it's going to be fine, I'm just going to shake and bake, but I'm not going to use it no matter what. And th one day the obsession left me. Like, you know, I didn't know it left me. I just didn't think about it one day. I was like, yo, we ain't think about using it in a, in, a, in a minute. And so that's the second part of the, of the message. That I stopped using, losing desire to use. So anyway, I, I made meetings. I did, I did all the stuff, right? I'm not going to talk about my using. I, I smoked crack. I, I'll tell you this. At the end of my addiction, I had a, a, a I don't know, one inch, one and a half, two inch spike, a, a, a stem. And my, and my tongue had burn sores on it. And my lips were burnt. I was 17 years old. I looked like I was a skeleton, maybe 40 years old. I, you know, I looked old. I, looked, I had an old, dying, I was, I was like a zombie amongst the living dead. And, and, and I was just taught, and you know, I, I lived in an abandoned uh, truck. My mother fed me like a dog. She would leave the food in the hallway. If I knocked on the door, she'd call the police. 
You know what I mean? So I, I, was, I was messed up when I got here. I was, too, you know, I was young, but I, I used hard. It happened quick for me. You know, I smoked a joint one day, and I couldn't stop smoking crack the next day. Like, you know, it was fast. You know what I'm saying? So I, I came to Narcotics and I, and, I, and I joined it no matter what. I made a, a decision in my heart, and the decision is great. It's the commitment that's the problem. You know what I mean? It's easy to make the decision. It's hard to honor the decision with a commitment. You, to, to be committed after the feeling is passed already. Like that convention was great and I'm joining no matter what club, but now the convention's been gone two months and I don't feel like that no more. I got to be committed to the decision still. So anyway, I did all the, I did the thing, I made coffee. I didn't drink coffee, I was young, I never drank, I, I, I made coffee. I did the greeting thing, I did service. Service is important, you know, service is very important. They told me that when you do service, you get off the edges and in the edges you can fall off. By doing service, you put yourself in the center of the process where it's hard to fall off, you know what I'm saying? So I, I started doing service. And um, and, and I wish I could say that I, that I you know that I got on the NA motorcycle, and uh and I and I, I had a wonderful process. And no, unfortunately, um, I, I I made a lot a lot of mistakes in narcotics. Now I sold drugs clean, you know. Um, in, in New York and maybe most areas, there's a lot of H and I commitments that are not being fulfilled. So I, I did H and I with bundles of heroin in my pocket. You know what I mean? Um, I would talk about this. And I would say, I would say, this, I would say, check it out, check it out. Listen, I want you to know that an addict, check it out, any addict, to stop using, lose the desire to use, and that's not it. That's you know, four guys in, in, in you know in, in a detox. I was preparing, right, and find a new way to live. You ain't got to live like, and I'm sharing the message passionately, and I'm believing it, but I was in contradiction with the message I was sharing. And then I had, bun- I had drugs on me, and I would go outside and, and, you know, sharing clean, living dirty. That's part of my process, and, and a lot of people, it's part of their process. Sometimes we learn to talk the talk, and then for some of us, it takes a little while before our feet catch up to our mouth. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I went to that hole. I slept with newcomers. I, I had, a, I had a, a, my home group, my, Nicole, she was there. And I was over there, I sat, like, we sat separate, and I would give her STDs regularly, you know what I mean? So the home group members, we, when they, we raise our hand, they're like, don't pick them, don't pick them. No, don't pick, because it was like, oh, oh, good sharing, mother, hubbers want to try. And then I'm like, well, if you don't like who you're with, who chose them? And, you know, we just, we just crushed, it was insanity, you know what I mean? And so, so, you know, just, I went through, what I'm saying is that I went through a lot of drama, Clean. I went. I got. I got cut in my face. I was in a shootout with two and a half years clean. I got arrested. It was ugly. You know what I mean? Um, I, the people in my home group said, "Listen, my friend said, my sponsor said I couldn't hang around you. My sponsor rang me that you people, places, and things right here in the rooms." And I was like, "Yo, who your sponsor? Let me talk to you." You know, bugged out. And so, I just want. I I, I want to cut to the. I hit a lot of bottoms clean. Um. I kept looking for love in all the wrong places, you know. I heard somebody say, you know, you, you keep looking for love on your back and you're only going to find it on your knees. And, you know, I was like, what the hell is that? And, you know, just, and, and I heard somebody say that, that the, the three most important relationships that you're going to have is one with your sponsor, one with God, and one with yourself. And that's my order because I didn't have God. My sponsor, he introduced me to the step work to God. And then I had a really, you know, so that was my, my, and I heard somebody else say, you know, two sickies can't make a, one well, uh, you know, two snowflakes start a blizzard, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, two, they told me two wet noodles can't help each other stand, you know what I mean? Just a lot of, and um, so, so I went, so, but, but listen, I went, through, I did a lot of things that you're not supposed to do. I, I, have, I, I messed up, I would have physical educations at events like this. I, you know, just, all right. So I had bottoms clean, all right? I had bottoms clean. So I, I got clean to the grace of God. I hated God when I got here. And then I didn't want nothing to do with God while I was here. Um, and then the, I had a second step experience. I had many second step experiences. Um, but what happened was, it says this, at this point, the pain of uh, the pain of uh, the pain of not using drugs forces us to seek a power greater than ourselves. Something like that. The, the, this point, the, the the pain of living life without the drugs. That's what it says. Uh, forces us to seek. So that was where I was at. I could no longer keep having the God of my convenience. 
Because in, third, in, in N.A., you have the right to God, and it's total and without any conscience. That is true. But there's a lot of stuff people don't want to talk about, about the, the right to God being total. It says that in order to grow spiritually, you must be honest about your belief. Right? I wasn't honest about my belief. It says we don't care what you believe in as long as it works for you. So it wasn't working for me. I, didn't, I couldn't get honest about my belief because I didn't believe in myself. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I, I messed up with the whole higher power thing. I had the God of my convenience. Then, I, you know, I went through a process. And, and some of us go through the same. I didn't, I didn't have a, 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 a faith. I came, I came up in witchcraft. You know, they, 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 they killed chickens. They threw blood over my head. You know, they, I, I grew up with manipulating spirits. That's what my mother was involved in. And, you know, when you manipulate spirits, you, eventually they start manipulating you. And I'm not even going to get into that stuff. But anyway, so, so I, I, I didn't have a, a, a way of praying. I didn't have a, you know, it says in the 11th step, if, you know, for those who've been done the 11th step, some people just go back to the faith of their child. I had nothing to go back to. I had no reference points. I didn't have, like, you know, I, I hated God because of the faith of my mother and my grandmother. My mother was, was involved in witchcraft, and my grandmother was involved in nominal, uh, uh, her religion, you know, just to, to be nice. And um, so, I don't want, because it also says in literature that we got to be careful how we share that we don't offend someone who's seeking on their spiritual path. You know, because it says... I, if you ever, you know, I'm a literature guy, but I like to share my experience with the literature, right? It says in the 11th step that... One of the most important journeys any member of Narcotics Anonymous will go on is the journey of seeking out a higher power. It talks about seeking out outside of Narcotics Anonymous. In NA literature, it says, 11th step, it says the most important journey you can go on is to go outside. And it says many of us visit all the spiritual centers in our community. Some of us, you know, it, it talks about that. And what happens is when we start doing that, and it says that too, the other members get afraid, right? You know, they get, don't bring that stuff in, you know, they, they get, they, they black belt. You know what I mean? And, and, and listen, and listen, if you're like me, you got a reason to be afraid. You know, when, when I came in here from a place of spiritual abuse, it's a spiritual meeting, I'm going to get into the spiritual aspect now, okay? But you know my story, I came in young, dumb, I didn't know much, I thought I knew everything, I was a cartoon gangster. It took me three years to understand that the disease of addiction is my problem, not crack. And so, all right. So I had this second step experience where I was, my, you know how the first step says our lives become unmanageable? Well, my life was unmanageable, but it became unbearable. Like, I couldn't bear to live. Like, it, I couldn't. You know, I was, I was, it was just, I was having sex with a lot of pretty girls, and it, I wasn't getting the hit. I was, I was what, doing this. I had some, sev I had some severe sexual issues, and I'm going to be not, I mean severe. I mean, like, you know, I never imagined smoking crack. I said, I'm never going to smoke crack. Look at these guys. They're twisted. They said, I'm never going to smoke crackhead, crackhead, crackhead. Not me. I, I, I went someplace I never imagined I would go. In NA, lust dragged me around the rooms like the crack dragged me on the street. So that's all I'm. So I had some character defects. In, in the first step of the working guy, it says we have this something. It's, there's something inside of us that 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 we cannot control. Our use. It says this same something makes us prone. So behavior is clean. You can character. I don't smoke crack. Let me say, I don't smoke crack, but I can smoke rage. You understand? I don't, I don't drink any alcohol, but I, but I can drink some lust. You understand? I, 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 I don't snort any coke, but I snort me in my soul some resentments. You know what I'm saying? So, so I got other drugs that I use now that I, I, can, I can use without a chemical. I can, keep, I can get to keep my clean time, but I get to alter my reality. And, and, and it doesn't do me no good. It, you know, okay, so I, I, I started seeking. You know, how do you, like, think about it. And I'm not, just, if you're atheist, agnostic, I was there too. You don't, you know, and it's a process. You don't got to be there because I share today. You, you, if you, even if you have never get there, that's your process. You're welcome here. You understand? But my process is that I need it. It says in 11th step also, provocative, provocative, it says the presence of God. Yeah. Right? It says in the 4th step, we need to have an intimate, re, intimate relation that a concept of God is not enough. And so there's some stuff. So, so I started, you know, I, I started saying, who the hell wrote this? That's why I don't like, I only like the basic text. You know what I mean? And so anyway, 
I started getting provoked. And I don't know if you know, like if you've ever been in this place where you take a shower and, and you feel dirty when you get out, this clean. I'm not going to you clean. And, you, and you, you, I've, been, I've been sharing since I, I had two years clean because I was young in recovery, youth in recovery. I, and I mean, I was, I just, my soul was dead. My spirit was dead. I was empty. I would talk about a higher power, but I wasn't feeling no, no fulfillment, no peace, no joy. I wasn't feeling alive. I, I, it was like my, my heart was heavy. It was my, you know, my soul was heavy. I was bitter. I was angry. I didn't like it when you succeeded. If I wasn't succeeding, I couldn't be happy for you. I was just messed up. And so I, I, I went on this spiritual journey. And the 11 steps says we sought. To, and again, this is just my process, okay? I started to sort means to investigate, to, to search, search, seek after, to go chase something. That's the word sort. And, and, and NA language is very important, you know. So I started seeking. And I, and I, and I did a lot of things, right? I, I, I did a lot of things, uh, you know. I don't want to, I did a lot of things. I went, I went, I went here, I went there, I went over there, and, and I knew that no matter where I went, I wasn't going to leave here. You understand what I'm saying to you? That that's part of the guidelines. That it says in the basic text now, it says, some of us stick around for a while. Now, this is a very provocative. Some of us stick around for a while simply to find salvation in one religious cult or another. Right? Nobody get nervous. That's some member's experience. That some of us stick around. That's been my experience. Some of us stick around for a while, and the 12 steps clear the way where the spiritual abuse, the issues of the past, the prejudice against religion, the prejudice against, that, that we deal with these issues, and we, have a, 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 we can be clear vessels where higher power can now speak to us. And how does higher power speak? He don't speak over there. He speaks through you. He speaks through the liturgy. It's not that deep. He speaks. He's, he's always been, you know, God has always been. George P., right? They call him effing George. Because he uses a lot of profanity. I love him dearly. I think he got, carries a powerful message. But they call him effing George because he's always cursing, which is good. When I got clean, I couldn't hear nothing. But I would watch George, and, and George was very angry. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and, and George, so I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't hear nothing. Like, oh, let's get high. But I was like, yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so, so. So God spoke to me when I first got here through George P. And, through, and there's another guy who used to quote literature. He says, you know, recovery is an active change of all that is. And God was saying, talking to me through Wilson. And God was speaking to me through and my people, my home group. God was speak, but I wasn't listening. So God kept telling me, can you hear me now? No? Okay, fine. Go. I was suffering some more. Can you hear me now? No? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? No? And, and, you know, so fine. I said, I hear you. I hear you. You know. So I went to a lot of places to seek after high. And let me tell you how I did it. Because uh, I want to share what I did can possibly work for you. I looked at members in my area. I said, that guy is insane. That guy is twisted. That guy is pretty cool. That guy is talking about not hitting his wife no more. That guy is talking about taking his kids. And I started looking. It's not that deep. It's a second step. Who around me? I know I've been in jail. I, I know, I know, yo, I got spots in the Bronx. I got a punto over here. I got a spot over there. I got a spot. I'm, I'm living life. And we don't shop in commissary. You know what I mean? I know when people are fake. I know. So, so I was, I looked at him. I said, oh, this guy got it. That girl got it. And I know, I didn't know what it was. But you know when you hear somebody or you want, somebody embraces you and they got it, you feel it. And so, so I said, I got it. And, and it was hard. I said, yo, let me talk to you. You know, and then back then, they're like, how do you pray? It was like, you know, let me see you naked. They're like, what do you mean? Well, how do I pray? Like, what are you talking? So people were not open about their paths. So anyway, I started seeking. And what happened to me is something beautiful happened. I walked into a spot one day. I was scared. It was foreign. I was trying to overcome a prejudice of mine. Because I, I, I wanted God, but this one particular concept of God was not welcome in my life at all. I wanted nothing to do with these idiots, self-righteous mother hubbers, hypocrites. And I said, but I'm seeking, and I got to be open. You know, when you got, to be open-minded is to really consider things that you don't agree with, consider them profoundly, med- and then make a decision. But I didn't like that. That's a mature open mind. I like to, no, 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 no. I went to this spot, and, and all I'm going to say is that uh, I had an encounter with God. I, I, I wasn't expecting what happened to me happen. I had an encounter with God. And so what happened was this. It, 
is I go to Haiti. I, I go to different places. I'm sorry, but I go to different places, and we give glasses away, right? We go, people don't, they can't see, but we give them glasses, and we give them glasses, and they can see, they're like, it's like they can see, like, oh, and, and right, it's pretty cool. So that's kind of what happened to me when I had this encounter. Somebody gave me glasses, and I was like, whoa, like, I can see, like, you, you ever seen the VA commercial? The guy's walking around like this, and then he drinks a V8, and boom, I had a V8. You know what I mean? I had a V8, a spiritual V8. You know, like, I, like, what happened was, I started to look at life from a, I, listen, I started to look, not live. I didn't start to, I didn't start, you know, I didn't stop watching porno immediately. You know what I'm saying? But I started to look at life, I started to see that the instant gratification was like stabbing my soul. Like just, just, just a hit was like stabbing me, and, and that, you know, to, to, and she was pretty and she was good, but it was, it was stabbing that I had to pay a high price for low living. That, that the price for instant gratification was my spiritual condition. And I started seeing it, but I didn't have the power to do nothing about it. I just started, I had a third step encounter. A third step is way different from 11th step. You know, the third step is an introduction. The eleventh step is now you're playing with power. Now you, go, you know, you got your knuckle game up. Third step, my knuckle game wasn't up. So, all right. So, so I started going, listen, so what was my third? So I had this encounter with a higher power, and I understood that, listen, I understood it. I don't know how it happened. I know you guys said it for a long time, and it finally connects. See, it says in here that we want to internalize the spiritual principles so they can become a fundamental part of who we are. Not just know the literature. I knew the literature, but I wasn't internalizing. And then the literature says at every meeting in Brooklyn, I don't know about you, it says there's one thing more than anything else. Right? I don't know if you read that in your ear. There is one thing. Raymond, you idiot. There is one thing more than anything else that will defeat you in your recovery process. What is that one thing? An attitude of indifference or intolerance towards spiritual principles. It was like, wow. Like the sky's parted. You understand? So... So I started, so I did, so what was my third step? I needed to do a fourth step because here's what happened to me. I had six and seven step issues, right? I, I was, I was, listen, I was living dirty. That whatever you can imagine, I, I, I was dirty. I was dirty. I wasn't comfortable clean. I needed to be dirty. You understand? And now I had this, this new, uh, 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 this new side of a living spiritual, but I couldn't stop living dirty. I could share clean and I would say I have four days without masturbating, but I was lying. I just finished masturbating. You understand what I'm saying to you? And so, but I, but I knew I, I got a vision of the man that I, I wanted to go towards that route. I wanted to one day to have integrity. I wanted one day to have a joy and a peace that had nothing to do with the things that you can count, but had everything to do with things that you cannot count. You, you know what I'm trying to say to you? So, so I started, and, and I did a fourth step. I had six and seven step issues, but I didn't have an adequate fourth and fifth step so that I can get to an exact nature of what's fueling this crazy behavior. Be I'll give you a quick example. How much, when did this end? I, all right. I'll give you. I don't, I, you know, but here's what happened, right? I'll give you a quick story. It's funny, it's cool, but it's pretty profound, at least for me, okay? I was like seven years old or eight years old. And I potty train, I go to school, the bathroom is right there. And I get this thought, why don't you piss out the window? <laughs> right? I don't, I, I said, what a, what a great idea. <laughs> that was, you know, so I, I go, I open the window, and I, you know, I'm urinating out the window, I'm writing my name, you know, out the window. I'm chilling, what a great idea. I'm brilliant, right? Five minutes later, I'm like, damn, immediately I knew, like, oh, you know what I mean? Somebody, somebody said, listen, somebody's urinated all over me from this window, right? Now, check it out. This is a big fifth, fourth, and fifth step stuff for me. My mother said, Raymond, what is wrong with you, right? In Spanish, she said, what's wrong with you? She said, the bathroom is right there, right? It's right. You know how to use the bathroom. It's right there. Nobody was in the bathroom. It's right. Why did you go and do this? Out and I'm looking at her. And listen, listen to me. I did this. I stabbed my sister once. I had a thought. The good sister. Right? Not the bad. I had a thought. Was, you know, I had, I had a thought once. She had long, beautiful hair. I had a thought. Grab her hair and run to the kitchen. Right? That's a great idea. I grab, so many times in my life, I would do things. And my mother would say, what is wrong with you, man? 
She said, why did you do this? Please, I just want to understand. Why did you do this? And I looked at her, and I said, I don't know. Why? I don't know if you can identify. Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. Fast forward. You, want to, you see that? I got a thought. I do things. I really don't know why I'm doing them. I'm clean X amount of years. I got a thought. I go act out. I destroy families. I destroy friendships. Listen, the sponsor is right there. The literature is right there. The 12 steps are right there. But I get this thought. And I go act. And then destruction comes. And then the people who care about me, the people saying, why do you do this, man? What's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. And the fourth, now this is very important in my life. The fourth step says that a written inventory will unlock parts of the subconscious mind that remain hidden to us even when we think or talk about what's going on with us. So what does that mean? That I did a fourth and fifth step and I can go back to, and I started understanding when I started picking up lies. The fifth step is about uncovering the lies. Like, I, there's a lie that's fueling my defective. There's a lie. Listen, I really, I believe in God. I love God. If you know me, I love God. I pray every day. I put on godly music. I got God tattoos. I got God, God, God. But it doesn't matter that crap. What matters is when I'm faced in a situation. Do I believe in God or do I believe in that girl that's going to give me instant gratification? Do I believe in that God or do I believe in buying this shirt? Do I believe in, because what I believe in my heart is what I'm going to believe, what I'm going to behave like. It's not what I say. And so I started seeing a contradiction in my life regarding my faith and my actions. And the fourth and this and the fourth and fifth step were big because I was able to put the pieces together and see that the, this disease been lying to me from I'm a little kid. And I've been seeing the patterns and I've been seeing. So, in, so the fourth and fifth step are great, but they're overrated. And the sixth and seventh step is underrated. So, so. So I started looking at my life, and I got to the six and seven, seven. Now listen to me. I'm going to share some things, and, and I could not listen. How do you get free without God? Like, I don't know. You got this people here with many years clean. I've seen 40 years. 30. Like, how, how do you work a six and seven step? How do you become entirely ready to have God remove these defects? How do you go to, how do you ask him when you don't have him? Or, or it's, just, it's just nominal. It's a theory. It's a concept. It's not a relationship. You know, that's the 11th step. The, 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 the proof of the 11th step in my life is do I have the power or do I don't have the power? If there's no power, the 11th step says that meditation is of no value if it doesn't affect the way we live. Do we we don't change. So what happened was in six and seven step, my third step got, I started having, a, now listen, this is very important in my life. The six and seven step, I always talk about them because I, I, I had about six step, right? And here's what happened. I started looking at my life and, and I said in the sixth step, what are the people, places, and things in my life that are, that are connected to this behavior, right? What were the places, what are the people, if, if it's sex, if it's whatever, who is it, who's in my home group, who's in my family, who's in my, who, who is around me that are the people I got to stay away from if I don't want to act out in this behavior. I, where are the places that I go, I started to identify that clean, uh, another stupid funny story, I would watch Baywatch, right? And I would, I forgot her name, but I would watch Pamela, Pamela, right, run across the beach and save somebody's life. And I'm watching, and she's running, right? To save somebody's life. And, and that would trigger, that's like smoking a joint for me. I want to smoke crack. I don't want to smoke a joint. So me watching Baywatch would begin to trigger something in me. And then by the end of the night, I'm on the street looking for dirty ankles. All right? And I started looking at this has led to this. And hanging out with him. And I started to I started identifying people in the sixth day. I said, God, I'm going to stay away from them. God said this. Raymond, I'll let go of what I, got in my, what I got in my hand if you let go of what you got in your hand. You let go of the sixth step. You want, you want, you want love? and it's, get, Stop the lust. You want love? You can't have them both. You can't serve two. You're going to have lust or you're going to have love. Which one do you want? And I, and, I, and I said, I want love, I want love. But all my actions were based on lust. So I, so, I stopped, so I started doing some stuff. I stopped watching Baywatch. I stopped listening to, you know, R. Kelly. I, you know, it was a big deal. R. Kelly was connected very profoundly to my acting out sexually. And I started, I started doing stupid things that are not mentioned in the literature. But that allowed me to be in a position to be free. 
So I, so I got, started getting free. I, you know, I started, I started getting free. God began to give me power. I put it, you know, and there's, a, there's a crass way to say, you know, to get screwed, you got to position yourself to get screwed, right? All right? I don't like the way that, I don't like that picture, but it's, maybe you can understand it. All right? But to get blessed, you got to position yourself to get blessed. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So, so I started saying, I started saying no to the things that I just, listen, you, I don't know about you, but even in the sixth step, I was going through a spiritual surgery and a spiritual warfare. Not listening to R. Kelly was, is like getting ripped out of my soul. Not going to the dance. The, the, I didn't go to the dance. I, I went to Jimmy Jam and I left. I don't go to dances. Why? Because I got married. When I got married, I said, okay, this is what bachelor, this is what single people do. This is what married people do. If you, if you act like a single guy, you're going to do things that single people do and you're going you're gonna to mess up your marriage. So I, so I started, so I, are you understand? I started changing in 6 and 7. I started making decisions. Listen, let me tell you what I started doing. I started living life on God's terms. That's a big deal. That, that's a big deal. So, so I started praying. Six, I started praying. You know, how, I don't know how you pray, but it says in the literature that you should pray according to your own belief. So I started praying. I pray. Like, you ever, ever heard somebody take a burning eye at a meeting? That's how I pray. I'm like, God, I need help, man. Did you see her? She was, she was beautiful. She looked at me twice, God. I said, you know, I go, that's how I pray. I, I don't know. I don't say, you know, uh, let the prayer, let the thoughts of my heart and the meditation of my, no. I'd be like, God, I'm bugging out. And if you don't touch me, if you don't remove this thought, if you don't intercede, then if you don't interfere, I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to embarrass me. I'm going to have, I need you. I'm bugging out. Like, right? that's how I pray. And when things are going good, I pray for some of y'all. Right? When I ain't got nothing, when, I, when I'm not, ah! I say, God, bless Jimmy. You know what I mean? Help, help, help all of NA with the conference agenda report. Help us to, you know, when, I, when I'm doing good. When I'm doing good, I'm like, yeah, I pray for some of y'all. You know what I mean? But mostly, I'm, a bit, mostly, I'm like, God, I don't want to blow it. The girl in Starbucks, she gave me free hazelnut syrup. I don't know what that means, but she's kind of cute. You know what I mean? I don't know. Free hazelnuts, you know, so different things. Now, now, I want to share this with y'all because I'm free. Listen, I've never, listen, I'm 36 years old, right? This month, I have 19 years clean, right? I'm 36 years old, 19 years clean. Right? I, I, am, I, am, I, I am so far from where I want to be, right? I'm so far. I've come so far, but I'm, I'm, it's not, clo- not even close to where I want. I got a vision of a man that I want to be. I got, I got to, I, I understand that, it, that in recovery, I have settled many times for mediocrity. I have settled for living, you know, it, well, this is what a man does. Men just, men lust. Men just, men, you know, all men. No, I, I, can, I don't got to be like a man that I see. I can be like the man that God wants me to be. You understand? I, I can, I don't, I can elevate. I can, I, I see the vision. We talked about vision statement. I see the vision. Vision is about preferred future. The, what a picture is going to look like tomorrow. If I do the work today, we can be there tomorrow. And then I see the vision. I was in the car. Yeah, we got a vision. We got a good vision. And, and I, listen, I got a vision for my life. The first step says that we can find purpose and meaning in our lives right and later on says, Look, you can find a vision for you all right so I, I don't want to be a guy I got a lot of issues listen listen my issues have issues okay so just but but with all with, with, with all the integrity that I can, with a little bit of integrity I can muster up I've never been this free I've never been I've never lived like I never I never thought that it could be like this you know I just I've been March 6th I've been married 12 years, right? 12 years. That's a miracle. I've been married 12. My sons, my sons are my convention buddies, right? I got a 16 year old, five, like, you know, we pray together. I'm really, really, I'm not, I'm really, really the father that I didn't have. I, we pray. I talked to my son about sex. I said, Ray, I said, Link, if, it, if, it, if it's, I said, Ray, and my, I told my son, he's 16, in my marriage, I struggle more with lust because of all the stuff I did with other women. I said, I said, if you can not, if you can save yourself, if you can be a, a man that doesn't have to be like the, and I told my son, man, if you can, a, a vow of, of, of purity, I told him, if you can be like, if you can, I have, and he says, wait, that is hard, this girl, and I have conversations with my son that I wish somebody would have had with me. You understand? That, that, that I'm grateful that when I came to NA, some of you guys had him with me. 
You understand? And, and my daughter, my daughter's nine years old. And so I do this a lot. I speak a lot. I sponsor people. I do, you know, I'm an N.A. guy. I love N.A. I, I, I'm a, oh, how can I say this? part of my story and it's hard to talk about. I got, I got, a, I got ordained, right? I got ordained in 2001, right? I said it. NA, NA is not a religious program. It's not a religious program. If you, if you read the 11 step, we don't have NA. NA doesn't have any preferred spiritual path. We just suggest you find your own path. And we encourage you. Even some members, you know, some members are messed up and they have bad experiences in other places. And, and you know, it says in the second step that everybody comes in here, third step, second step, and it says everybody comes in with our own with our history. And that history, for the most part, will dictate what we believe in and how we, you know, so a lot of us, so I got ordained in 2001. Right? I, got, I, got, I was like, Dad, this, I, I'm in a sacred woman. I don't get, care about the ordination. That's great. But the relationship that I'm having now. Like, the, like I'm, I'm, I'm having an intimate, sacred romance with a, with, listen, with a specific God that I hated and loathed. Like, you know, like, I don't know if you ever dealt with racism. I dealt with racism. I, I didn't like certain people when I got here. And then I had to heal and deal in four through seven and start love. I had this particular prejudice towards his faith. And today I'm part of that faith. I wear it on my arms, literally, right? I, I'm not in, I, I, I love N.A. Right, we got a building. We got a beautiful building, 360 Skimmer Street. Right, that's it. We got a beautiful, and because of my experience with St. Mark's, we're trying to recreate the availability of narcotics anonymous meetings in this beautiful building. So if we got 21, 21 NA meetings in this in this, in this building. Right, we rent it out to groups. You know, you know, we pay one dollar, twenty, whatever it is. But I'm an NA member. I go to different. The spirit of God, right there. I'm a self-centered guy. I go to different countries. Right? And I'm not saying this, I'm the man. I'm not the man. I go for me. I don't go for them. It might, people might think, man, you're a nice guy. You do, I don't do that for them. You don't know the spiritual richness I get from being of service to somebody else. Right? So I go to third world country. I go to different places. I do My life, listen, my whole life is about service. My whole life. Now, I, I, Ron H. said once at a convention, you might know who, but he said, if you want to be a big shot, do something big out there. Right? So I, so I said, because there could be a, a big fish in a small bowl sometimes. And I started doing this thing in 2001 where I, we started, and I said, listen, who's my people? My people are not Spanish people. My people are not Puerto Rican people. My, I don't, you know, that's my cultura. I'm not with the culture thing. My people is recovering addicts, right? So my whole life is based on serving recovering addicts from within and from without. Now, I know some of y'all don't like the without stuff. But it's okay. You know, it's fine. It's, I, I've never imagined. Now, listen, I'm, I'm going to wind it down, right? I never imagined. That life could be like this. That, that, I, that, I, that I'm really freer than I ever pictured I could be. That, look, at, look, you know, I have a loving and caring God. Look how loving and caring my God is. Some of you guys are going to be very happy about this. My God blinded a beautiful woman long enough to marry me. Right? This, my God, that's my, my God. See, I, I got a loving and caring God. What that means is that my God wants better for me than I want for myself. Loving and caring means that he has a special interest in the things and the desires of my heart. Look in the dictionary. You know, just, just I have a loving, caring God. I got, so if you're new, right, you can stay clean. Meeting makers make it. Like, this is not that, you know, meeting makers make it. Meetings, meetings, more meetings. We, we say more meetings, more choices, right? Less meetings, less choices. No meetings, no choice, right? Make meetings, make me. I, I, so let me finish the last line of the 11-step thing that I told you about. Some of us stick around for a while just to find salvation in one religious cult or another, right? The next line is very important. It is important. Not to walk out of the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous on a religious zeal. Now, I, I want to say that because part of the spiritual process is this. It's sad. It's sad for me. It hurts me when members like me, who hated God, who literally says lacked a working relationship with God, and A, and the steps, and the people, help you, show you, right, they... If they tolerate you, they, you know, into, they love you into a relationship with God, and then you leave us. You leave us. Why would you want to leave the vehicle that God used to break his anonymity, to warm your heart, to show his face to you? Now, I say that from my, I can say that from my perspective, because I can say that. Because, we, we, listen, we need men and women who are experiencing an awakening of the spirit on whatever level that might be. 
and staying 12 step members, H and I guys, sponsorshiping, GSR, you know, regional. We need guys that when you find a relationship with God, and if God, you know, it says 11 step, having entered this phase, right? A lot of people manipulate that. They say, I'm on this phase. You know, I'm, I'm in the 16th dimension of the 11th step in the makers of the recovery. You know, you know. Right? Somebody told me this once. They said, they said Raymond, they, they warned me when I found God. Don't be so heavenly minded that you're not earthly good. Right? They said, don't get so deep that you muddy the waters. Right? If you, if you never leave the basics, you don't have to come back to the basics. So, so I, I'm going to, uh, I think my time is probably up. Now, I, I want to say this. Listen, in the spiritual aspect, right, I, I'm having a relationship with God. I, I mean a real God, if I can say that, because I had a fake God for a while. Me, not you. I have a relationship with a real God that's transforming my life from the inside out. That I don't use profanity. I want to I wanna be humble. I wanna, I'm not humble. I want to be humble. I wanna, when you run into me, if you, ever, if you know me, I want to add value to people's lives. I want to serve. I want to be. I know that by, if I live to glorify God, my higher power, if I live to, to build up his reputation, if I live to, to you know, to, to, if these hands could be hands that he can use to serve, and this mouth could be a mouth that he can use to take. I'm not, I'm not talking about deep spirit. I'm talking about if I can just be the, the, who I am in NA, if I can just live this you know what they say. Say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. Right? Right? Don't, just, don't say it mean. Just be me and, okay. So now, if you're new, please, maybe you don't like me. Maybe my flavor is totally, it's cool, no. And maybe, like, this was not the meeting for you. Like, you, you, you're pissed off you pay $15 for this meeting, right? I want to encourage you. Not, you didn't pay $15 for the meeting. You know I me, mean, the food, I don't want to get in trouble. But, but, if, if, but if maybe this particular speaker was not your flavor, please keep coming back. Because you're going to you're gonna get your flavor. You're going to hear your story. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you just, but here's the thing. Please keep coming back, right? I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to close. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story. I got 20 stories running through my head right now, but I'm going to tell you a quick story. All right. All right. I, I, I'll tell you uh, the guru story, if you don't mind, right? Because when I got clean, I heard the guru story, and it helped me out. Uh, there was a guru. He was in a, in a village. A guru is somebody who knows everything there is to know about, everything there is to know about, right? So the guru would give uh, once a month anyone in the village an opportunity to prove that he is a guru. Any question, I'll give you the answer. So anyway, um, there's a young guy. He's like a newcomer guy. You know what I mean? He got two years clean in the village, two years in the village. Um, and, um, and so... The young guy says, ah, I'm going to prove the guru wrong. I'm going I'm to come up with a plan to prove the guru wrong. So the guy comes up with a plan, and he says, I'm going to get a little bird, and I'm going to put it behind my back, right? And I'm going to go in front of everybody and say, guru, all right? And he's going to present, okay. And so he says, if the guru, I'm asking the guru what I got in my hand. If the guru says, I got a little bird in my hand, the real question, is the bird dead or is the bird alive? If the guru says the bird is alive, I'm going to snap the bird's neck. I'm going to kill the bird and present the dead bird. And the guru says the bird, the bird is dead. I'm going to let the bird fly away. I got him. All right? That's what the, the newcomer says. The, the guy was two, two years in the village. All right. Anyway. So the day comes. He comes to the village. And he says, okay, guru, if you know everything there is to know about, everything there is to know about, what do I have behind my back? And the guru says, well, young man, you have a little bird behind your back. He says, okay, very good, very good, very good. Uh, everybody listening? Very good. Is the bird dead? Or is the bird alive? The guru pauses for a moment. The young man says, I got him. The guru looks at the young man's eyes and he said, well, young man, it's all in your hands. Right? That's a, now, simple little, not that deep, not an aha moment. Right? Just, no, I don't want to get you like, waiting for like, the climax of the story. The point of the story is that we have 12 steps. We have 12 traditions. We have 12 concepts. We have very, very, very well-experienced members in our country. We have profound literature that, that says it comes, it's, it's divine, that it just says. That means it comes from God, written by addicts. And it's all in our hands, what we do with this. It's all, it's all up to, you know, am I going to fight the old time who's been around? Or I'm going to try to take a lead. I want to be a spiritual man. I got to find spiritual men. If I want to be a better woman, I got to find better women. You know, just what am I going to do? Am I going to keep doing what I always did? I'm going to keep getting what I always got? Am I willing? Do I really want something new? Because if, really, if I really want something new, then I'll do something new. If I want something old, I keep doing the same old stuff. And uh, 
In closing, I want to thank Malikna. I want to thank, again, this, I, I, I'm speaking from my heart. I thank the trusted servants. I thank that I was able to come to a place and have a great time and learn about the, you know, vision and, and motions and how what NA is going to look like in the future. And we got like 59,000 meetings a week all over the world, 69. So that's like blows my mind. Like I'm part of something really, really big. Like Jimmy Jam talked about the newcomer hitting the, like the ocean. Like we're part of something that's, that we're part of something that's life transforming, life changing. We're like we're in the recycling business. Like the police are happy in Brooklyn that NA exists. You know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like this is like, this is a, this is big deal stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if you're new, please give yourself a break. Keep coming back. And if you're old, I got a message for you old. I got what, two minutes for the people with a lot of time. But for, I want to help my, I want to share something nice for my predecessors. It says in the fourth step that every time we write another fourth step, we peel another layer of the onion. And we uncover uh, new levels of how the addiction manifesting itself in our lives. So I want to encourage the predecessor, I need you desperately. And we need you desperately. But we know that the disease uh, goes after the, our predecessors. At least I know that the disease goes after, our, if you, you know, there's a saying, if you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter type. But I'm, I'm sorry I'm using that expression. But you know, if the old timers are not doing too good, it gives the newcomers a little hope. So I want to encourage the old timers to please, please keep doing the step work. Um, now I humbly ask you, how old is your last fourth step? Right? That, that's not, I'm, I'm, I'm humbly want to encourage you. Um, how old is your last fourth step? When's the last time you went over step work with a sponsor? I don't say that to challenge you. I say that in loving service. Please, I want to encourage you. Uh, I need you. I want to see you two years from now. I want to see you celebrate 50 years. And, and But it's not going to happen. It says in the, in the recovery and relapse, when we neglect doing 12-step work, our program stops. So please, old timer, don't neglect doing 12-step work. Thank you for letting me share.